We are here with Brandon J. Carr, the nicest man in Super Art Fight and the newest Super Art Fight champion. Uh, was there ever a moment in the bout where you thought, I've got this, it's in the bag? No, not even once. Up until the very end, I, I really had no idea. Actually, I thought that Brock had it. Even, like after the cheers, even? Or? Even after the, even listening to the cheers, it sounded, if not even, uh, heavier than paper. The, the weird thing about the cheers is, depending on where you're standing, it always is a different story. And the, really the only place that standing is counting is where the decibel meter is. Right. Uh, like from the side, I had no idea. From the back, it was a different story. From the front, it, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, but for that matter, your run through Super Yard Fight has actually been meteoric. We were trying to remember, have you lost at any of the uh, numbered Super Art Fight events? I have not. My only loss was at uh, Red Palace to Jamie Noguchi yeah. by, by point one decibel. Now, what on earth is going on here? Are, do you have a secret group of 50 friends that come to every show? I don't. This, this falls into all of the things that I've grown up doing, which is theater and uh, art and making a fool out of myself. And bringing extra colors. And bringing extra colors. Okay. Doing something different is always something that I'm You, you snuck, I believe, both blue and orange onto the Actually, camera. I had five colors in my pocket. I think I got some red on there, because I didn't have a red marker, so all the red that I did was the crayon. Um, I, I didn't bring out green, because I think, I think we're over green at this point. Well, green is dead, is from what I understand. Right. You did, you did retire. I did green. retire green. Okay, Let, let's actually get the breakdown of your bout. Uh, you started off with Marty versus Ross. I was talking to Mikey about it. How do you realize that the two of you came up with the idea of doing uh, Mikey and Ross, Mikey and Ross, Marty and Ross as your topics? How did you come up with the idea of doing Marty and Ross? We were at the Red Palace, and there was a starting topic that went off, and so I was starting to think. I think I knew the championship bout was coming out, and I was trying to think of something different that hasn't been done before, and um, I was watching the two of them on stage, and I thought, well, that's perfect. So I decided to ask and see if it had been done before, and uh, apparently that had already been decided for it. Um, I, I was also commenting on that this might have been one of the most giving Wheel of Deaths ever. It just delivered all the best topics for the final bout. Uh, one of my personal favorite that when we saw it and it was entered into the maw of the wheel the, the, where we feed the ideas, we all just started giggling with Admiral Snack Bar. That was fun. Mm -hmm. That was a lot of fun to do. I immediately got a, a mental image of just an obese snack bar um, saying it's a snack. Mm -hmm. It just that one popped right away. That was that was probably my my best move of the night. It was either that or it was a Kit Kat. There's, there's just some very, there's, there's, there's a lot of lines there, but with art fights, you kind of have to go with with whatever jumps in your brain. But Fat Akbar became such a focal point of yes. that final piece. Yes, and he's adorable. Uh, the most dangerous prey of all. That was such a stumbling moment for me. I I couldn't think of anything at all. So I just went with a, a, a buff guy being attacked by a falcon or something. I, it was it was not my proudest art fight moment. Um, but then you got Batman Arkham Horror. Uh, that was one of those topics that uh, getting that uh, Venn diagram of crossover, we were wondering which artist would get it. Yes. Uh, how quick was it to get the mental picture? It came right away. Because uh, I was thinking about going, initially, the, the initial thought was some of the villains and making them extra villainous. But then I decided to do uh, Batman with tentacles and a big jaw and everything. I thought it would have a more, uh, a better visual impact. Mm -hmm. And then a Clockwork Orange Julius. That one was tricky. Uh, because I forgot what the look was. As soon as it came up, I, I blanked. And so I just kind of went with it. And I started remembering as I was going, but that was another scary one. Now, we're not addressing this, but you were going up against, uh, and it's going to look odd for the interviews, because in both cases, both you and Mikey have dressed down since getting off right, stage. Right. In Mikey's case, it might be dressing up. Your case, it was definitely <laughs> dressing down, because you came out with the tux, the tails, and the, cane. the cane, and the hat. Yes, which... Thank you for the loan very much. For those wondering, hey, that looked a lot like Dern's hat, that's because, yes, it was Dern's hat. Um, the cane, though, I, what happened with the cane at the very end? <laughs> we, we 
had a brief sword fight uh, with the sword that uh, he had used to slay the uh, Miss Spaghetti Kiss. Miss Spaghetti Kiss. And um, when we hit them together, for some reason, uh, the cane went before the sword. Now, not to give away any of the illusion of art by whatever, it was a very cheap cane and it was a foam sword, so one of them was going to get it completely. It wasn't a terribly good sword, <laughs> yes. But uh, speaking of that sword, I do have it on authority that that was loaned to him by a Jamie Brawlin Baldwin. Which I thought was very interesting, because it seemed like she was uh, giving an advantage to Mr. Bronco with the hopes that she would go up against him at the next event so that she wouldn't have to go up against me again. Well, to be fair, she has a winning record against Michael Bronco. Sure. She's actually dethroned him the most uh, from previous battle bout uh, contentions. Uh, but you actually have, I believe, uh, even here at Baltimore, a winning record against Jamie Baldwin. I Oh yeah, I would that have to check here. books. That, no, that was here where I, uh, I defeated her. That was uh, that was a Super Art Fight Eleven. So, so what does this bring for thirteen? Uh, I I think that that my victory at eleven may foreshadow the events of thirteen, but uh, I like to play it by ear. I like to live in the moment. I don't want to get too cocky, but it would be spectacular to beat her again and keep the title. All right, here's looking towards two thousand and twelve. Absolutely.